Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in TNO, the last of Europe in which we're playing as a nation I've yet to play at the time of this recording. Awesome! But if you'd like to read about everyone's favorite Reich's Commissariat, please go right ahead. But we do need to talk about Stahlhöcker campaigning for unity in Austin. Franz Walter Stalock, an influential and close friend of the Reich's Commissar, has recently announced a new initiative designed to promote unity and stability within Austin. While many may question the purpose of such an act, especially with the current situation in Austin, Stalock has declared that all citizens of Austin must act as one of their to prosper in the coming years. Stalock has enjoyed a large support base within the government, and this recent campaign has increased his popularity. We wish him luck. Fight for over influence as the Big Daddy government slowly collapses. Deal with unrest in your nation. Ah. And continue to guide Austin into the, awesome into the future, keeping your status as a model colony. But we've got to talk about the finishing touches. The last five years have been busy for the Austin administration, headed by Henrik Loz. Austin has seen some dramatic changes to the countryside. Seas are now larger thanks to the lure of a new, better-paying job in the factories. In Estonia, impressive harbors to facilitate trade near completion, while the rest of the region overwent modernization in all sectors. While the economy has grown to impressive heights, Germanization has proceeded decently, or at least until the economic crash of the 50s, likewise Austin, has been plagued by native partisans for the better part of two decades now. Economic prosperity not enough to get the rebels to come out of the forest on top, to top it off. We need to keep an eye on factionalism in our administration. The coming days must be navigated carefully. Austin is finally reaching her potential, but the country is still arrived with low levels of discontent. We must navigate with the partisans' politics of her nation with equal caution. Very soft here. But it's going. Cool. <clears throat> We gotta keep the peace. A little note of the vast majority of the people in Austin, we have an impressive database of known partisans, leaders, and most importantly, their families. There are many partisans who live off the grid and for all intents and purposes out of our hands. However, their families, of course, are not. We have an understanding with the major resistance groups. Their leaders know that we hold their families' lives in our hands. Therefore, they understand that touching our industrial complexes or our major government facilities means brutal, retali brutal retaliation. As long as the government doesn't collapse, the informal agreement will continue for the foreseeable future. If you're wondering about Hanuk Loza, please go ahead too. The Rex Commissar Phase. <clears throat> Galat uh, Henrik Loz, or Loza, has served faithfully ever since the establishment of the Reichskommissar at Oslin. His regime has shown massive progress for German interests, and while the Reichskommissar has never been the strongest leader, choosing to serve more as a figurehead than an actual leader and leaving actual running of the colony to his underlings has brought much economic and social movement that most of the Reichskommissars of the Reich can never truly boast. As this man of rule, it really allowed for schisms to form in the colony, with the main power struggle between the fanatical militarists under Otto Henrik Dreschler and the pragmatic conservatives under Franz Walter Stalacker. However, in recent years, the Reichskommissar has quietly faded from public life. This has meant that the capacity, his capacity, as figurehead for the colony's uh, government has also begun to fade. The office of Reichskommissar has seemingly taken its toll on Heinrich, and the matter of who will succeed him as Reichskommissar is still undecided. The key to the end of the struggle thus does not lie in favor of the Reichskommissar, but in the collaboration governments of Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, and Belarus. But with these governments constantly competing for funding from the central government, in the Riga it remains to be seen if it's possible to unite them under one singular person, a storm is brewing. But we wouldn't want it any other way, right? Oh, we are poor, poor. That February incident. The unthinkable has occurred. On February 14th, the attack on our nation, like nothing has ever seen, occurred uh, before. Or before occurred. Shocking not just Austin, but the rest, of course, of the Reich. <clears throat> Numerous seemingly coordinated attacks on our arms factories took place, destroying already struggling arms market. The strangest part is that we have no idea who committed such an attack. The only way to find out is to launch an investigation of the culprit immediately. We must find the culprit. Yeah, that changes, but we're not quite maxed out. No. Oh, there, okay. I just had to open and close it again. I like more growth because it's not very good right now. But whatever. Uh, max out of this. I got rid of the navy. We had like four destroyers for a navy, and I figured not really important. If you're wondering about national socialist uh, corporatism, please go ahead. Yay! We all love national socialism. Estonian harbors, partisans, infrastructure. Let's go with Lithuanian integration. Of all the peoples that inhabit Austin, Lithuanians have been the most accommodating to German rule. Lithuania boasts the highest rates of native Germanization and the lowest number of partisan incursions. All in all, Lithuania is the model of German success in the colonies, and the fatherland rewards its loyal subjects. As time to finish our Germanization efforts in Lithuania, investments will be poured into the region, new factories and roads will be built, infrastructure will be improved, and the people will be incorporated into our administration as official citizens. As they should, as we're doing some uh, industry stuff with hospitals, as well as getting some infantry weapon improvement six. Nice. And we do actually start off with, with fighters, which is cool, and air assault companies, which... That does not look like an air assault company, but whatever. A difficult choice. With the investigations getting started, our neighbors, uh, the Belarusians, and the SS have both offered <clears throat> to find the culprit by searching in the border regions and their own nations. However, the bitter hatred left over from the war still remains, and they refuse to work with each other, which we must choose between the two. SS, Belarusians. <clears throat> Stalker meets with Vestu Vestuka. Vest Vitutsa. Vitutska. 
Michael Vitutska, who served as the leader of the Black Cats, a local collaborator working with the SS in Belarusia, and traditionally met with Franz uh, Walter Stalka. Vitutska holds a great amount of influence within the region of Belarusia and has been a face of the native collaboration with the Germans for many years. Stalka has announced that he hopes that the meeting would help the native Belarusians accept the new situation. Hopefully, he's successful. SS, Belarusians. Uh, let's go with, I want to go with the SS. Just, just for this one. Because I want, might do this at several different times, so. Finish dealing with two of the four collaboration governments in Austin? Oh. Vituska assumes control of the Central Rada. After the removal of the old administration in Belarusian Central Rada, Michael uh, Vituska has come to prominence in the Belarusian Central Rada. Uh, Vituska seemingly loyal to the government in Austin and has worked as a loyal agent for the Reich all the way back in the Second World War. But being a native Belarusian, Vituska may have subversive intentions. All oh, that's for sure is that while Vituska may not work directly against us, he'll most likely not be working in our favor, but cooperation may yield certain benefits. It's quite worrying. Conservative. Uh, protests. Yakon? Returns from Burgundy. Conservative minded. Hmm, interesting. Actually, wow. Plus 50% more attack and defense for artillery? Holy crap. Militarist. Conservative. Huh. Plan the tour. Prepare the military parade. Interesting. The yes, SS comes very. Right. With SS helping, we are now full help from Himmler in tracking down the criminal who conducted, conducted the July incident. The work during the war is imprisoning enemies of the state, and those of not of the master race will be invaluable in the time like this. Surely no time will find them. Go to the bottom of this. The strongest army. The best industry. I got this is way better to do than the strongest army. Industry is way more important than that. 0.62. We could just get rid of our military, we could probably do it. Temp tax cut? Mm, not quite. What other divisions do we have? Oh, 18 combat is not bad. Motorized, not bad. Panzers are okay as well, 18 combat. With. Ah, and a small one. Cool. Oh, can we only do one of these four? Oh, okay. Further request military integration. The armed forces in Austin are quite sizable. We have enough men in our own army that we don't need to rely on reinforcements from the following. Every time a crisis breaks out, the issue with our army is that it is divided. <clears throat> All the colonial administrations in Austin have had their own separate armed forces that indirectly answer to us, which created a nightmare in the Wehrmacht chain of command. Taking a small step forward, we'll attempt to integrate Lithuania's army to our own forces under direct control. Lithuania, being one of the most stable and Germanized regions in Austin, is most likely to accept the proposal. This pans out well in the end, will increase our militancy throughout the region and bolster our forces, but if the plan falls through, it will be proved to the conservatives that the status quo is the correct path for Austin, increasing their influence. I guess more militaries may be, or more conservative. Stalaker meets with the garrison leaders. Stalaker has concluded a series of meetings with the local and regional commanders of the German garrison. While Stalaker has enjoyed strong support from the government, the same cannot be said of the military. While he's not disliked, many of the garrison prefer Dreschler to Stalaker, and these meetings are only seen as an attempt by him to increase his support among the military. We wish him luck, but from what Povilas, our administration, though well armed and manned, lacks high ranking officers to coordinate our divisions in the field. Although we could simply request some higher ups to be transferred over from Germany proper, the administration favors a more local solution. Polovas Blachavicius, as a native Lithuanian who has long served the Reich and her military as a naval and loyal, loyal officer. With decades of experience, it's a natural choice for promotion. Not only do we make one of our own local officers a general, but also show the natives that loyalty and hard work will be rewarded. His connections with the fellow Lithuanians could, should also not be discounted offhand. He could prove to be extremely useful when the investigation starts, several weeks after the incident. We've been able to organize an official task force to investigate the culprits behind the tax. <clears throat> We determined the process which we will go through during the investigation. Uh, we will start by investigating any possible ooh, internal involvement in the matter. As the compromised member of our military is a dangerous thing indeed. Next, we will move on to investigations, investigation. Any possible involvement by the natives in the incident. Finally, we will all follow up on any possible leads we may have found. We will get to the bottom of this, we swear. Stalaker meets with the Heinrich Loza. On the latest of a series of meetings, Stalaker uh, has met with the Rex Commissar himself, Heinrich Loza. While Stalik has enjoyed a private friendship with the Rex Commissar for a long time, this official meeting is seen as a tacit blessing of Stalik's policies from the aged Commissar. It's only served to increase his popularity across Awesome. A fruitful discussion. Also, I know Austin awesome explodes into a lot of different uh, places and stuff like that, but I just want to see what happens. Mm, but the Lucian doubts. Well, let's give a look at them. The Belarusian collaboration government has always been strange. The region is home to a divided Russian population, German settlers, and other ethnic minorities. Not much in the way of information comes out of the region, the local government keeps mostly to itself, preparing, preferring to handle its own affairs with as little intervention as possible, while this isn't issued in and of itself. It's frustrating that our administration does not know where the collaboration government stands politically, whether they support the conservatives or the military center government. Our administration needs a clear answer, one way or another. Answers so far have been ambiguous and non-committal, for whatever reason. If we are to solidify a rule and know that we... 
where we stand with the Belarusian collaborators, we most know what they think. We cannot afford a wild card of bodies on the side. We need a definite answer. And that's a good amount of manpower. We are on conscription policy, mass mechanization, stuff like that. Huh? Not bad. But more industry is very good. Very nice, very nice. The poverty is getting worse, as well as their industrial base. Actually, pretty much probably the internal matters. Oh boy. Despite our many successes over the years, the investigation arm of the police have had always had difficulty in acquiring anything beyond the most basic governmental assistance. Many both high and low, preferring more direct methods of dealing with crime home base, for the team is beneath a low, squabbling building in a lower, squattier building. The word podunk may be apt, but it's never used, at least not within the earshot of the chief investigator. Roughly speaking, there are two factions we can choose to investigate, the liberal spirits of the hardline SS. Both have been satisfied providing minimal information to our government. In our investigation, they have to change soon, especially as the situation on the ground deteriorates. Disciplinary actions for excessive use of force has almost quintupled among our forces, and that is only for reported incidents. Many uh, shock patrols walk through the ruins of what was once a village, but the casing is still warm beneath the uh, ashes. Let's go and investigate the liberals. Let's see what the libs are up to. Oh, it's going hell, hell high, but now it's coming down. Uh, temp tax hike. I, mean, I don't want to lower growth too much. Um, would be bad. Military austerity, civilian austerity. Both these are going to be doing quite a bit. I would like more money. Belarusian doubts. Me with Vituska. Vituska. The best way to collaborate, or figure out where the Belarusian collaborators stand, is to be direct. Or arrange a meeting with Michael Vituska, the head of the Belarusian collaboration government, face to face. Ideally, the confrontation forces him to commit to one of the factions in the government and finally start some more regular interactions with their administration. Surely, Vituska. Wouldn't well, it be foolish enough to form a difference when confronted and increase funding for the Belarusian Home Guard? It has new military aims as well. Vituska has come forward to the government with a petition to increase funding for the Belarusian Home Guard. For the signatures of many Belarusian officials as well as military personnel, he cites the lack of equipment as well as funds for the budgeting amount of volunteers, although it could have easily forged evidence shown to suggest a need for an increase in budget, maybe expanding the guard could decrease the number of battalions currently tied up in garrisons, relieving our armed forces, especially considering the recent unrest in Germany. Hmm. Dude's guy. We're all national socials here, but. <clears throat> hmm. Try once. Alto Hanarek Darsho, the general commissioner of Latvia, has recently announced that he intends. The petition of the government for the expansion of the military forces of Austin. While Austin has maintained a German garrison since its inception, a large military has never seemed necessary for the Rakhine Commissariat. The Russians have even gone so far as advocate for conscription in Austin. An unpopular prospect in the colony. While the Russian's position has remained unanswered, our positions remain unanswered. We're going to continue doing so. We must make a decision now. Fine. Weaken the Rushler. Oh. Actually, let's take a look here. More liberal, conservative. Yakolin's return. You know what? Screw it. We'll do it. Why not? Partisan attacks in Latvia. Oh, well. Provoking the Latvian population has had the opposite effect than intended. <clears throat> intended. Instead of decreasing the presence of morale, we appear to have only rage and bold in them. Germanized settlements across the region are reported attacked by an amalgamation of natives and other partisans on garrisons and militia. With these in Letland in particular affect them. Regrettably, we'll have to show up any plans for increased crackdowns on the rebels' nuisance while men recover. No. My bad. So if you learn about these, which I'll probably read again maybe in the future. There you go. Alter the deal. I need more. So this one says what? All right, Stahlecker, militarism, Thrushler. I'm not taking a side. Okay. I'm just going to go in with whatever I feel like. Here's Julian, a bloodstained confession. Working with the brutes in the SS has been proven to be, if not a good idea, at least a pragmatic one. Focusing on the spirits in the government has turned up several sympathetic officers, some even quite high ranking. All of them have been refused to say anything beyond expletives. Uh, however, after several days of fruitless interrogations and running in our circles, our seasoned interrogators had just about gave up before the SS stepped in. One set of pliers, a car battery three hours in a back room later, a beaten and bloodied staff officer cr finally cracked, singing like a canary, or at least trying to with his remaining vocal cords. It seems that certain low priority weapon shipments have been redirected to a currently unknown partisan group. Any further details are still hazy, but we have concrete and somewhat bloody evidence now. Feeding the Vitsuka. As a point of Belarusian council, formerly under our thumb, growing increasingly discontent, the risk of an open declaration of uh, independence by the Belarusian council has become an ever looming threat upon the horizon as such. If we now engage in negotiations with, Vit with Vitu Vit Vituska Duska, and its council will be likely to be blood, and with it the inherent risk of the Belarus will be lost. 
As such, it's imperative that we partake in the negotiations with the Council upon the topic of further autonomy. With such autonomy, a grant might hurt the public image of Riga, as well as the greater control over White Larus, it would nevertheless make the Council quite content and save off most the risk of non-compliance. The question remains, who do we send forth to negotiate with Vitutska? To ensure the contentment, only a prominent member of our administration will do with such. Uh, the Rushler and Stalker will be the most suitable candidates. Without a doubt. The Rushler is a hot-headed. It will surely turn the conversation around upon the Council rather than offering concessions with open arms, yet perhaps. That's what we need to secure a top and favorable arrangement with the Belarusian Council, on the other hand. We can just send Stalker. We can trust that. Should he, we send him forth, he will do so as told by Uriga to do, do the detail. And little else. The Belarusians would certainly be pleased with us, too, but too pleased, perhaps, as they might take our open offerings as a sign that we are willing to consider more. The Rushler is our man. Secure some military support. Openness and compromise are key, since Stalaker. Hmm. Conservative support, military support. The Tutska meets with another close. And awesome. Where every important politician belongs to one faction or another, understanding neutral may be the most difficult and dangerous thing one can ever think of. And that's why both Drush, Stalak, and all other military minister and officials in a government are closely watching the moves of <clears throat> Batutska. Uh, the leader of the Belarusian government, hoping to invite him to their factions, but today the news that Vitutska has met with Heinrich Lohz had destroyed all their hopes. The details of the meeting have been, re been revealed, and all others know that this is a secret meeting between the two, those two, and Lohz didn't tell any of his advisors before. But no matter what they talked about, they have, have according to public announcement, made great progress and agreement on many important issues about the future of Austin, which is the last thing Drescher and Stalaker wished to see. For now, it's clear that Vitutska and his Belarusian government won't choose a side in the political struggle of the colony, making the future of Austin even more unpredictable. But... For any player in this deadly game, such, as, such a frustration won't extinguish his desire for power. <clears throat> uh, instead, it will only force the, them to seek other more possible allies in this colony, and they won't stop until one last opponent falls in front of their eyes. Perhaps he's another player in the game. Oh. Well, remember that. Please go ahead, as well as meet with Fetutska. And Belarusian's doubts. Well, that kind of sucks. Um... Yakon's return. Ah, let's do this one. Friedrich Yakon has returned home. He has been away on an official state visit to Burgundy for several months to discuss SS affairs. In all reality, we don't say who got to who got to go, and frankly, we didn't care. It meant one less fanatic for us to deal with. Yakon being absent from the commissariat was pleasant and gave the suffering small folks a much needed respite. Yakon rules the eastern provinces like a dystopian dictator, using the SS as his own personal terrorist and boogeyman. With, so with him gone, our administration and the locals got some respite. His return from Burgundy has been dreaded. Yakon is more ruthless than ever. The SS are starting to, to more resemble Dervangel's brigade than proper German soldiers. And Yakon only encourages them to brutalize the undesirables with no attack or attempts of Germanization. We need to reign Yakon in before he completely destabilizes to Lithuania or worse. Estonian harbors. Wow, look at all this, huh? Much of Estonia's industrial development has been focused on building up the port facilities. The new port tightens the connection Austin shares with the Reich, allowing trade to flow much quicker and massively increase volume. The ports, however, are nowhere built up to their full potential. We can make a large investment to massively expand the harbor and increase our links to the Vatalan. In addition to the economic benefits, conservatives in our country will be pleased with these developments and the increased economic cooperation with the Vatalan. Siemens opens new plants in Germany. In a grand publicized ceremony, the Siemens Corporation at last announced the uh, locale for the new manufacturing plants. The ex commissariat Austin put forth plans of grand investments into Estonia to attract the attention of the fat cats in the Siemens executive offices, and spirits were high that, so that soon large manufacturing plants would be opened by the company throughout Estonia, creating thousands of jobs and providing yet another public relations boon for the model colony. Confidence was indeed high, that was of course until uh, headlines reached Riga. Siemens reveals German manufacturing expansion plan, read headlines, accompanied by the picture of the CEO, Ernst von Siemens, delivering the announcement. Several gallatists back in Germany were surely overjoyed by such tidings, but Loza was not. He, as well as many others, who drafted investment plans, had genuine hopes for a successful bid. Such hopes were now gone quicker than in, dust in a steady wind. And the investment plans for Estonia are now little more than a fruitless diversion. If we follow to carry them out now, surely the capital required to conduct the investigations or investments will now be better to elsewhere. Another plan for the trashman, then. If you remember that, please go ahead. As well as attract Siemens. And it's doing Harper's course. The mil army conducts military exercises. The army has recently started its yearly exercises in Austin, which are a series of maneuvers within the entire colony. While some have decried the ex exercises as a decadent waste of resources, Otto Heinrich Dresser expressed pride in Austin's armed forces and important endeavor in Landrut's protests. The industrialists, led by Landrut, have stirred up anti Nazi sentiment in Tallinn. There are currently hundreds of natives and even a few Germans taking to the streets to demand better treatment of the citizens and more rights for non Germans. The industrialists are playing a dangerous game, but it seems Alan Ruth has a conscience after all. We could sit down with them and offer some token reforms, pay some of service, and go on our way. On the other hand, we could just crack down on the protests and call it a day. 4%? Not bad. 
That's not good. Uh, mediocre would be good to get to. Oh, is this going down? Internal report. Oh, it's going down. That's not good. It's falling. Oh, we are at peace, of course. Well, you know what? What if I said goodbye? Though it has not been easy, our internal investigation was more or less successful. We have held solid leaders to where our weapons have been flowing to an even smaller paper trail. It's been a major coup for the troll government, a small but very real success story to rally around, even once harsh critics are coming out in support of the investigation in a welcome gesture, regardless of how sickly the sweetened words are. <clears throat> the political victory has secured enough financial and military resources to pursue a new lead to its conclusion. Excellent work. On to the next lead. Well, that's not good. Dress her alert or replaced. I'll tell Heimlich Dressler. The security minister of the Reichskommissar at Austin walks into his office as usual, finding that two men in uniform have been waiting for him. Oh boy. By the order of the Reichskommissar, one of them says, you've been removed from your post. You are no longer the security minister of the Reichskommissar at Austin. What? What? Why? It's shocked and outraged Dressler asks, how can you do that? What am I doing wrong? All I've done, all I've done and planned to do is for the good of Austin and Germany. So how do you dare just say I'm removed from my post? Oh, I understand. It's Yakon, isn't him? And tell me, it, it is him. It is him. Please be calm, sir. The other man tries to calm Joshua down. We just were sent to deliver this order. Neither of us know the reasons behind your removal. As for Yakon, all I know is that he's involved in this plot. In fact, as far as I know, uh, no one in the government and the army knows what he's plotting nowadays. You and others better start investigating the SS as soon as possible. Joshua's temper had gone down a little. It continued. I can assure you that every sketchy thing in Rex comes out of Austin, or maybe the whole world, is manipulated by the Burgundian psycho and his followers. You can go back and tell those that I don't trust him anymore. My friends in Germany won't be happy to hear about this. But the decision is not my will at all. Oh, you're going to bet Trusher as well? Please go ahead. I personally want to investigate the Eastern Camps. Ah, uh, well. Yeah, going to return from a visit to Burgundy. Friedrich Jackal, commander of the SS Oberabschnitt Austin, has recently returned from his official visit to Burgundy. Yakon served with distinction at the SS during the Great War against the Soviet menace and also serves as SS and police leader of Austin. While Yakon is a controversial figure within the government of Austin, many, of the, many viewing his connections to Burgundy with suspicion. The power he wields with his office is immense and discourages most open criticism. Yakon was officially invited to Burgundy by Himmler himself several months ago and met with many high ranking members of the Burgundian SS. Yakon himself stated that the visit inspired him to continue to pursue the Germanization of Austin. We'll be watching in Belarusian auxiliary police increase their influence. The local auxiliary police in Belarus have recently expanded their executive powers in the region. The act seems more and more to be an underhanded move by Belarusian officials to increase their local control. After Vitutska's attempts at expanding the Home Guard, it is becoming increasingly clear that the Belarusians want to increase their influence and in autonomy within Austin. Another attempt for autonomy. Conservatism, militarism, militarism, and not taking a side. Oh boy. Not much here, eh? Yeah, you get rid of the entire military. We can't even do that, so that sucks. Extremely high deficit, but it is what it is. Telenin University Massacre. Um, prepare a grand military parade for our mighty Fuhrer. Plan the tour. Schalacher Dreschler. Well, Dreschler's been replaced, so... Can we even do that? We've got a crap ton of debt, though. I'm not really sure. We'll see. I don't want to lose weekly stability of political power. I kind of want to go sit down with their leaders, honestly. We'll end with the industrious and the many protests of force are hand. Though we may not like it, the best course of action for us is to take it as a swallow or pride and hear what the grievances they have with their administration. Though it may be simpler to just send in the army. These protests prove that there's widespread dissatisfaction throughout Austin, and listening how now now and offering some token reforms to improve the situation. Because it's a lot of grief in the long term. Unfortunately, conservatives throughout Germany will not approve of our tactics, but we must do what is best. For Oslin. Native suspicions, with the conclusion of our internal investigation, we must refocus our attention to other promising areas. Initial reports indicate that, as of now, there are two different areas of our country we can investigate, the Baltics or Belarus. Though the government has poured more funding and manpower into our investigation, the sure says both areas ensures that we can only meaningfully investigate one, again we must choose. Belarus the Baltics. I kinda know what's going on in the Baltics. Belarus. I'm kind of skeptical of them, but the Talon in our Talon University Massacre. Bullets explode from the guns, precisely hitting the target's forehead. Tanks and other armored vehicles rush towards the crowd at full speed. The crowd desperately, running for their lives. Tear gas and smoke bombs are holding the remaining ones, depriving their last hopes of surviving. Men and women fall on the ground, crying at their once noble holy campus. And one from Germania sees such a scene of heck. He would have thought that he was standing in a horrific battlefield during the war, but here now is just a Talon University, one of the most famous universities in Austin. Our Austin. But after all, who started it in the beginning? It's clearly not the government in Riga, for the order given to the Estonian government is to stop the riot only in the nonviolent way. Maybe it's a local officer who thought 
he is wise enough to handle the situation on his own, but it only leads to such a disaster in the end. Maybe it's just one single soldier who lost his temper when hearing the shouts from the students. Shout the decisive bullet that blasted everything up, or maybe it's all due to the students. We're too ignorant to ignore the weapons in the soldiers' hands, but no matter who started it, what's done is done, and all we can do is deal with the aftermath as best we can. That's a total rule of political games, right? However, the bad news is, we're not the only player in this game. The other players who are closely watching the chessboard in the cap of the German Reich must have made their move immediately after that to Axens and Tallinn. But now we don't know who... Uh, no, how will the reformist react to our action? Well, what is certain is, they're extremely furious, and for according to our agents in Germania, Speer and his followers have started to call a government a government as savage as Himmler's Burgundy and private. Firstly, I don't like blood at all, but if you're wondering about this one, please go ahead. I wanted to go with this one, obviously, obviously sit down with their leaders. Which is still completing. Interesting. Maybe we can get both done, maybe? We're losing weekly stability, but okay. Prepare the military parade. Dreschler. Well, we already replaced Dreschler with Yeklin. Um, plan the tour. Stalaker. I want that one. I want to invite Mr. Daddy, the model colony. I want to do that one badly, but I kind of want to plan the tour too. Nothing short of a grand tour should be arranged for the Big Daddy's visit to Austin. Only the finest food will be fit for him. We should he should travel in luxury, but train limo, one of both, of course. You will see the finest, most modern factories in all the Reichs Commissariats. Our marvelous new harbors deserve to be seen by his eyes as well. Then we will proceed to the beautiful countryside, stopping to observe our successful Germanization in Lithuania. Following that, we can show the success of the native ruled lands, Belarus in particular, before ending in the historic German city of Riga to display our cultural heritage. We must do whatever we can to convince our big daddy to make this uh, state trip. Him doing so would greatly boost our standings in conservative circles and would lead to even more legitimacy in our administration. Oh, conservative circles, huh. I think we want to go to the other one. Actually, probably want to go to the other one, in all honesty. Stalaker. Because as much as I want that one. Uh, Grim Military Parade. What is this one, maybe? In preparation for the Big Daddy's visit to our shores, we'll organize a demonstration of material might. All of our panzers must be present. Do we have jet planes? Of course we do. They'll fly information over our men. The head must be present in formation for the Big Daddy's arrival. Anything else will be disgraced. The military's approved, you say? You're darn right. They better be approving. Why the, heck, why the heck aren't they helping? Get back to work. The rationals focus on army development. Also, Heinrich Drescher has proposed to adjust the next five-year budget for Austin to increase the military spending. Drescher has advocated for the expansion of the military for a long time and has demanded that the budget is adjusted so that the expanding the army, Navy, and Air Force is feasible. While Drescher's proposal was met with little enthusiasm from the government, it received widespread support from the garrison. While neither side willing to compromise, those are the most intervene and settle the matter once for all. Can I make adjustments? No, we'll do that one. Even though I don't like cutting this down more and raising the minimum, I, mean, I guess we could save a little bit more, but still. Yakon announced a new purity initiative. Ooh. Frederick Yakon has already still announced his new purity initiatives within the garrison of Austin, using his powers as the SS and police leader of Austin. Yakon has started a thorough investigation into the ancestries of each member of the high and mid level officers of the garrison. And if found not to be sufficiently <clears throat> pure, will be removed from the command. The initiative has proven unpopular with the military, especially Drusher, but who has publicly voiced his dissatisfaction. An offer we can't refuse. It seems like something quite interesting has. Popped up. Two days ago, after nearly being fired on several times, a group of native partisans approached one of our investigators with an offer. In exchange for food and medical supplies, they're willing to divulge information about the attackers, whether out of some sense of duty or sheer spite from an empire. The reasons don't matter too much, this presents us with quite the conundrum. While we are technically under one orders to destroy any partisan resistance, the past few years have seen a near total cessation of hostilities, if only because neither side can afford the resources to crush the other. The squeeze in the investigation also grows tired by the day. And the need for results grows strong, and we must take any lead we can get. This, again, could be a very well a trap. Huh. Accept it. See what happens. This is getting worse. This is pretty bad. Even if we raise taxes. Like, how much would we raise here? By 15%. Five. Pride. Pride. Still, not very good right now. Um, strongest army? In the east, our army stands second to none. We have based our command and army structure on the Fatherlands, and the quality shows that our here suffers no rivals. No rebel or partisan dares to stand up to the might of Austin's Wehrmacht. Uh, the streets are quite p quiet and peaceful, and the countrysides are under our control, and even the forests seem distorted or deserted of hostile activity. All the Reichs come and start to look upon us with envy, for we have by far the strongest army in all the Reichs colonies. Truly, our army is the best. Oh, invite Hitler. 
Our plans have been set. Hitler's tour route has been decided on, and transportation has already been arranged and on standby. The entire country is prepared for the Fuhrer's arrival. Oh, look at that. That's different. Um, all that we need to do is officially send the invitation to the Reichstag. All that we can do now is wait. In all reality, the decision of the Fuhrer is up to Hitler's successor. Hopefully, the relations with him are cordial, unless our invitation is declined. The fall of such an embarrassment would be severe. The best industry. And we do have the best industry. Our industrial investments throughout Austin are finally paying off. The fields. Uh, uh, mine, mines of Belarus have produced plentiful raw materials for our factories in Estonia are educated and experienced workers then manufacture quality goods in modern industrial facilities. The goods and flow from our new rail lines and roads to our major harbors. There are shipping transports waiting port for the, lo for the loads. Sending our, our goods all throughout the four corners of the pack. Our economy is the envy of all rocks come out. No one's ever off. No one has our output, efficiency, or quality. We simply have no equals. Our industry is simply the best. Wasted effort. Oh, crap. Negotiators have just returned from the final meeting with the Parsons, and it's not gone well. While men approach the Parsons unarmed in preparation for the handover, the SS security detail had different ideas. Upon citing the Partisans, <clears throat> the SS security detail had different ideas. Uh, uh, they opened fire, killing several, wounding quite a few of our own men. They underestimated the preparation of the Partisans, however, as guerrillas hidden in the surrounding thickets revealed themselves. The shooting firefight and artillery barrage ensued that nothing of what either party wanted to hand over remained. We have reprimanded the security detail, but as always, they simply brushed us off. Not much we can do with those who don't answer to our government, unfortunately. And Vitutska requests increased autonomy. Vitutska, with a little surprise, has directly asked the central government for increased autonomy for Belarus. All of them is leading up to the proposal made by Vitutska, have been centralized Belarusian power to an alarming level, so clear. So the clear answer is to simply decline this proposal, on the other hand. While no elaborate expansions by Fatutska could convince the central government that the benefit would be mutual, maybe giving a little autonomy away, could be less bureaucratic stress on the central government, while also appeasing Vitutska for the time being. No. No. No more. Well, it goes Jim in Madagascar. I think we're just kind of doomed to not do very well right now. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be removed soon enough. The strongest army, the best energy in the model colony. Well, we are the perfect model colony. With none to compare. Absolutely none, my friends. Even though we've got a good amount of manpower now, even though we're so demobilizing. Oh, huh, kind of sucks. Oh, well, whatever. Ah, uh, let's see. Supply trucks. Go high. Go low. Go high. Demand for increased arms production. When what has become a typical demand, Alto Heinrich Dressler has demanded that several industrial projects within Austin be put on hold in order to convert the factories working in them to produce arms for the military. Time, this time, his proposal has been refused outright. <clears throat> oh, look at that. Oh, look at Bulgaria. Oh, Mayor Alonso Mitsu Speer, handsome guy. <clears throat> and the Russia has announced his public dissatisfaction with the government. Oh. Uh, Militarism, 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 eh? But we kind of already replaced him. We need both of these two. Hmm. I say no. Uh, Andreas Mayer has concluded his final official meeting with Speer today. Andreas has served as a diplomat for Austin for many years and holds a considerable influence within the administration of Austin. Ever since his entry into the office, Andreas has sought to moderate the policies within Austin, and has recently received the blessing from Speer, who has encouraged him to continue his efforts in Austin. Interesting. Also, Speer was elected to be, or selected, not elected, but selected, to be Hitler's successor, so we'll see. Hey, no longer stupid campus protests. Ah, uh, Cornwall. Thorough, huh? Ah, uh, coffee's not bad. Need a report. As your native investigation winds down, these documents are put back into the archives. We must contend with the truth, as harsh as it is. This has been a colossal waste of time. Yes, and it is hate us, but it would have bombed us if had the culprits not gone to us first. None of that brings us any closer to discovering the culprit behind the attacks, nor does it help to prevent any future ones. Many others have come to the same conclusion that are suddenly criticizing our use of for resources of what was essentially a dead end. We must redouble our efforts and own our focus uh, to ensure this does not happen again. Hopefully, we'll have better luck next time. The Yakon advocates for an increased Germanization. <clears throat> The Yakon has renewed his campaign for the increased Germanization of Austin. Although Austin is already one of the most Germanized Reichskommissariats, Yakon has stated that he would not stop his campaign until Austin was fully German in all aspects. Yakon has petitioned the government of Austin uh, to accelerate its Germanization schemes by requesting even more settlers of pure ancestry from Germany. And I agree, the model colony. Through our hard work, 
Rakhs Commissariat Austin has become the Rakhs model colony. No other Rakhs Commissariat can claim such economic success or growth. No one can deny the ongoing success of Germanizing the local populations. In this regard, even Burman and Burman Marlin looked upon us with envy. We have an excellent army which is well organized, supplied, and supported by numerous well trained militias. We have labored long and hard to make Austin a shining jewel of the Reich. We have accomplished much during our tenure, and it is from our efforts we are able to reap such large rewards. The following must be proud of us. They must be. They have to be. We have critical debt. That's not good. What happens if we were to spend way down? And then we get rid of our military, we would have enough. Which we're spending goes way down. Which I don't agree with. We do that. What if we just got rid of the military? This is a bad idea. But the economy comes first. And honestly, I, I don't know how far this, we're going to go with this campaign. So... I'm here to explore. And to dealing the army is probably a bad idea. And we have to do this one just to get more taxable population. And this one, yeah, you know, it is what it is. So now, this should be going up, right? Yeah, this should be going up now, barely. Get a mediocre, get a fair. I mean, we're not really going to be cutting down. But why do we have? R&D, I guess, yeah. Procurement funding. Fine. Now come. The investigative process has been exhausting and expensive by no means easy, but slowly but surely. It's arriving at its conclusion. There remains only one group of interest, one that we've had a long and short history with. Those that are with Jews. Though many consider the issue dealt with long ago, the attack is forced to revisit even our most fundamental assumptions. A small, submissive, but even significant minority of the troublemakers will remain in Austin and scattered among the countryside and cities. We must decide whether to focus resources on urban or rural areas. The investigation is almost over, and when it is, we'll have our own Nakam. It only needs to have a little more patience. I want to say it's the cities. But it could be very wrong about that. Keep training, guys. Oh, happy March, everybody. This can't really train. Yeah. The model colony. Subversive literature discovered in schools. Recent raids by the Oracle have discovered that subversive literature is present in a number of schools. The books by which many spout pro communist propaganda have mostly been found hidden away under floorboards or... Oh, look at that. Or in secret compartments. While many have demanded the harshest punishments for the teachers and students of all, Andres Meyer Lundru has advocated for lenient citizens. While the verdict is still undecided, the government has proven to be reluctant to punish the Aryan students of all. Little window of ban, SS conducts unauthorized maneuvers. As sentences grow in Germany and Austin, the SS has been discovered to be conducting several unauthorized maneuvers in the southern regions of Austin. As SS leader Friedrich Jakob has said that the maneuvers were merely remedial training, and nothing to concern oneself about. Many in Austin remember the attempted coup by Himmler and the SS in Germany many years ago, and the SS was being viewed with an air of suspicion. All of this stays under control, and Mayor Lundgren states out, uh, lays out a reform plan. During a conference press conference today, Andreas Mayor Lundgren has revealed his new proposal for the reform for reforms inside Austin, including the reforms of the lessening of the Germanization efforts, protection of native culture, and increased freedom of expression within Austin. The proposal has been met with widespread disapproval from the majority of those in the government, but Mayor Lundgren's popularity with the students and reformers in Austin sharply rose at the conference. Preposterous! And the students protest. As storm clouds gather over Germany, it seems that the unrest is, oh, plagues the youth of the fatherland that has spread to our lands. Already, several student groups have started protests across Austin. Most of them unifying behind the reform plan recently proposed by Andres Merlandrut. Darn them nothing but ashes. Our search teams are reporting back, and unfortunately, it doesn't seem like they are finished with finding much. We've dragged a few Jews out from the hiding holes and disposed of them, but their numbers don't break into two dozen. They all seem to be acting as individuals rather than according to the group. There's no documents, no leaders, no nothing. Sweeping building to building is incredibly time consuming and quite costly, too. While many in our government consider eradicating the Jewish menace once and for all a top priority, we can no longer conceal the amount of manpower and resources we are spending for results, or rather, the lack of them. We've run out of leads. Not good. But our current debt is 6.181, huh? If we could even just cut that down a little bit, I will be happy. Well, that's not good. Students clash with the Orpo. A student protest across Austin have recently erupted in a riot as Orpo units attempted to quash the protesters. The protests have only increased intensity after the attempted attempts by the Orpo to silence them. As soon as we know in, in sight of the protests, oh, this stays under control. 
But like most things, we'll have to wait and see. Actually, that's all we have time. Go instead. This is worrying. I got rid of the navy. I get rid of the army. Max Commissariat Muscovine. Almost like no air force, so we almost no growth. Money creation is zero percent. Due to the risk of money printing, it's only enabled when we have a deficit. Oh, okay. Yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah. Well, that's going to keep going up, so we better be able to pay this off. Happy May, though. Happy New May. We did make a little bit more money. Civilian austerity. Wouldn't really help us that much, in all honesty. And our political power gains, which I never really wanted to do. So, we'll see. Hey, did it go down slightly? It might have. Of course, I guess we get more growth, so... Um... Not coming report. Despite the best efforts of our most encouraged off agents, after concluding the investigation and the supposed involvement as in a common organization, we've made no progress in identifying the culprits, as was perhaps to be expected. Looking at such an obscure and potentially fictional group has proven to be beyond us. As we announced in our latest reports, the government once again faced harsh criticism from the party, some with questioning whether or not the signals that the current administration has failed completely. Well, I don't know about failing completely, man. What are you talking about? Are we still going up? No, we're not. Crap. Wait. Well, we have a deficit. Jump back there. Is it going up now? Yeah, it is. Just barely. Just ever so barely. Military austerity. So I'm not going to cut civilian spending. No way. Um. Yeah. Let's, let's get a better guess. This is where we're at now. Effective debt on GDP growth. Get slightly more stability to get up to here. I know not much is going on, but still. That thing goes up by 10% more, so. We'll see what happens. Final report. With the last phase of the investigation finally concluded, we have reached the end of the whole debacle. After thorough investigation in our, to our internal suspects, a possible native collaboration of a suspicious organization named Nakan, as we reach the end of this investigation, a single question remains who was the mastermind behind the attacks? We finally reached a conclusion. Did we gather enough evidence to discover the culprit? In all honesty, no, we did not. And we still have a deficit. It's not going that not much further, but we remember the gross round, which is actually pretty darn nice. A cold trail. As the days go by and revealing all of all the information, we are left with a simple, undeniable fact. We have failed utterly and completely. Despite the valiant efforts of our investigation team, and despite all the time and effort we poured into the black hole of resources, we have failed. The news has reached the rest of the Einheit's pack, and our German master is less than happy with their investigation, of course. <clears throat> and several members of the team have been forced to retire by the party. The incident will cast a long shadow over government for a long time. Quite unfortunate. The Reichskommissar is dead. Tragedy struck the Reich. Heinrich Lohz, the Reichskommissar of Austin, peacefully passed away in his bed in the early hours of the morning. Having proudly served as a gaul letter of Schleswig Holstein, Lohz was appointed to administrate the newly established Reichskommissariat during the Second World War under a stable colon leadership and administrative prowess. <clears throat> Austin had become a model colony for Germanization, securing Lohz as a place in history as one of the party's most diligent comrades. Unfortunately, the ailing Reichskommissar had suffered from illnesses relating to the heart since the 50s, where most doctors have attributed to the stress of fatigue. Only in the last few months, however, did Loza's health begin to rapidly deteriorate, despite the weakness of his body. Loza's mind began or remained sharp as ever. <coughs> as ever, final, better in his days. He set about the task of appointing a new successor and ensuring a smooth transition in leadership. To no surprise, Karl Sigmund Litzman, the general commission of Estonia, was selected to be the new Reichskommissar. Litzman's business in Germania is to be swiftly concluded, and thus is to be immediately flown to Riga with the passing of such a prestigious torch. Also, will no doubt continue to its, on its path to greatness and ascent into new golden age. Good luck, Herr Litzman. Oh boy, and Hitler just died too, so. Let's look at this guy. Karl Sigmund Litzman. We still have a slight surplus. Actually, better than earlier. But, you know, it is what it is. It's still going up. Not by much, but... <clears throat> We're doing the best we can, in all honesty. Oh, look at this. Germany is going... Oh, hello. <coughs> the destruction of HFB 3206. The entirety of Austin was shaken to its core as the news broke out that morning. While soon-to-be Rex Commissar Litzman had left from Germany the day before, he would never land in Riga. While footage of the event was strictly censored and kept from public eye, you'll see this seemed to leak to the mass not long after the event. Pictures of the scorched remains of the flight strewn across northern Austin. Uh, the rescue workers desperately picking through the remains of both flight and crew, or Aus of Austin's last hope being extinguished as soon as it had appeared. Blame for the leaks had fallen on male autonomous tips, or anonymous tips, having placed them on the agent tertiarily linked to the group of youth militias, though the whistleblower him killed himself before capture. There has been a loss in the flurry of other accusations, however, so blame for the event has solely fallen on Stalaker's lap. 
Reports have filtered in that the plane was shot down by an anti-air rocket launched from an emplacement in a military camp. Lol de Stalker. The plane having apparently been mistaken for a Swedish bomber flying too close to German airspace despite repeated warnings. I was not entirely sure how or exactly this was possible, but in all investigation into the matter has been lost to the politics. With the death of Lutzman, any hope for United Austin has been extinguished. Although next time I have received a flurry of requests outright begging for a new replacement soon. It is doubtful that the politicians will give us will grace us with another pick. Oh. Oh, we're gonna choose. Stalker or Dreschler? Well, he was, he was replaced, wasn't he? I guess he was replaced, so let's go with... Uh, mm, I don't know, man. Dreschler? Well, we might do both, eventually. National Socialism, huh? But we got rid of him, though. And we got Jekyll. Dreschler? Oh, let's go with Dreschler. Screw it. Wow. Heinrich, you did not look good, man. We'll see what happens. Error. Failure. Very cool. Doesn't really affect the economy too much, though. And there goes Burgundy. And so when do we explode? Probably very soon. Happy November, everybody. Happy November. Our leader died. Oh, demilitarized. Their leader died. These guys are going to kill each other very soon, too. And things would explode in the crisis of succession. Although Heinrich Drush has always liked <clears throat> Litzman, of course. The commissioner had remained. Holy crap, look at this. Uh, retained a dullness inherent in all German bureaucrats, but he was a man willing to listen to everyone's perspective. As the son of a general, Litzman had always harbored an immense respect for the military, unlike those smug fools like Stalik or Delaridid, and rejected the Rush Lord every opportunity. The Russia could have easily climbed to the rank, hirings of power in the Litzman government. He was almost certain of it. But the Russia was not destined to be a follower. Litzman's death, as tragic as it was, was now served a greater purpose. The Austin government had finally come to their senses and declared Russia to be the new Rox Commissar as he stared out the window at the morning sun. A large mug of steaming coffee in one hand, a sense of gleeful anticipation filled him. There was much work to be done. The door behind him slammed open. Drescher flinched. He turned around to deliver a freer rent until his eyes settled upon the solemn faces of Gunther Perl and General, Ob General Obst, Friedrich Wilhelm Müller. What is it? The Russia asked nervously, his heart began to pound faster. That warm Stalak of Müller's spot, he's rallied his forces in Estonia. He's preparing to at an attack against us. He's disputed your appointment, Perl said bitterly. That little weasel's about to get triggered an effing civil war. He's already mobilized the army. The Russia's mug slipped from his grasp, shattering on the floor in an explosion of ceramic and scorched black liquid. F word. The Russia cried, his voice breaking. He cleared his throat. Have we altered the Reich? Have we alerted the Reich of the Chosen? They're refusing to send aid, Mueller replied. Something monumental is about to happen over there. We've been abandoned. For now, we stand alone. Ah, oh, General Berserk Letlin. Ah, interesting. So now, we have us. Versus these guys, which I won't try Stalker sometimes. Oh. oh. The rifle air. Well, okay then. Loza is dead, but there's no time for Austin or more. Threats have arisen in every direction, from rivals of Loza's legacy to Belarus and peasant uprisings, to men from the woods, heck bent on revenge. Whilst the others who claim the title of Rock Commissar either limp wristed pencil pushers with the SS dogs into the pay of Burgundy, only Drusher has the steel to put down these rebels and restore Austin to its place as a vigilant border guard of the Reich. I guess we'll read about at least the berserkers. Like the Norsemen of old, Germans have spread their culture across Europe with fire and sword. The Viking blood still flows, flows through our veins, and it's in defending our homeland that we will release its strength. Let's struck fear into the hearts of our enemies with our furious berserkers. We shall raise a division to hold that berserker spirit in their hearts. Whilst our enemies are either ill-trained or peasants, or lions led by sheep, our shield fighters will always prevail. But, I think for now, with this terrible stuff here, we can spend more money, right? That's okay. But, I think we'll end here, and we'll probably do this in the next episode, and maybe even try to play from this guy, Stalaker's perspective as well. But we'll see. If you enjoyed the video, though, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we'll continue to have fun with good old Otto Heinrich, Big Daddy Drusher. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.